हेलो दोस्तों स्वागत है आप सभी का हमारे चैनल लिग्न सेंटर पर तो दोस्तों आपकी जो प्रीवियस वीडियो था यानी पार्ट वन पर हमने आपको एम ई जी जीरो फाइव का जो क्वेश्चन नंबर वन था उसका सॉल्व असाइनमेंट प्रोवाइड किया था जिनका मार्च थर्टी फर्स्ट लास्ट सबमिशन है और थर्टी सेप्टेम्बर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू लास्ट सेप्टेम्बर है उनका असाइनमेंट है ये तो दोस्तों पार्ट वन पर हमने क्वेश्चन नंबर वन डील कर लिया है और अब हम जो क्वेश्चन डील कर रहे हैं वह आपका क्वेश्चन नंबर टू है जो कि शॉर्ट नोट्स का रहेगा और आपको इस पर ए बी सी डी और ई e का क्वेश्चन देखने को मिल जाएगा तो दोस्तों अगर वीडियो लंबा हो जाएगा तो हम इसको भी पार्ट पर डिवाइड करेंगे बने रहे हमारे वीडियो के साथ और अगर आप हमारे चैनल के साथ नए जुड़े हैं तो दोस्तों कृपया हमारे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब लाइक शेयर ज़रूर करें तो दोस्तों आपका जो क्वेश्चन नंबर टू है वो है राइट शॉर्ट नोट ऑन द फॉलोइंग और आपका जो क्वेश्चन नंबर टू का ए रहेगा वो है एरिस्टोटल थ्योरी ऑफ ट्रेजिडी और इसका आंसर रहेगा द सिक्स एलिमेंट ऑफ ट्रेजिडी ऑल दो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट ऑल द सिक्स एलिमेंट ऑफ ट्रेजिडी सेपरेटली वन थिंग शुड बी नोटेड दैट दिस एलिमेंट एक्ट एज अ यूनिटी वेन ऑन द स्टेज एंड दैट The separate looking is only for the sake of analysis. When Aristotle talk about them, classifying into internal and external, then also it is only for the sake of convenience in analyzing it. Another thing that should be noted about this element is that they are not as obvious as the visual auditory content of theater, and also that none of this element is more important than other. People often take myth as more important for Aristotle call it as soul of tragedy but it is not in the case he by any means does not mean that other element are less important than myth the role that myth play is that of holding the other element of the play structurally play as a complete performance than it so as a very complex structure which of course compromise speaking dancing gesturing singing etc the story of the series of event is considered as the basic structure of the play but when look at from the point of view of the complete performance it is only the ground for the other element to act upon myth plot and ethos character Aristotle defined plot as the arrangement of the incidents therefore not the story itself but the way the incident are presented to the audience the structure of the play according to aristotle tragedies where the outcome depend on a tightly constructed cause and effect chain of action are superior to those that depend primarily on the character and personality of the protagonist plot that meet he, this criteria will have the following qualities on text in a perfect tragedy character will support the plot therefore personal motives will be intricately connected part of the cause and effect chain of action producing pity and fear in the audience the protagonist should be reowned and prosperous so his change of fortune can be from good to bad this change should come about as the result not of vice but of some great error or frailty in a character such a plus is most likely to generate pity and fear in the audience for pity is aroused by unmerited misfortune fear by the misfortune of a man like ourselves the term aristotle use here homersia often translate as tragic fall has been the subject of much debate the meaning of the greek word is closer to mistake than to fall and i believe it is best interpreted in the context of what aristotle has to say about the plot at the law of probability or necessity in the ideal 
tragedy. Claim Aristotle, the protagonist will mystically bring about his own downfall, not because he is sinful or morally weak, but because he does not know enough. The role of the Hamarsia in tragedy comes not from its moral status, but from the inviolability of its consciousness. Our next subtopic is myth or plot as organic whole. According to Aristotle, the plot must be a whole with a beginning, middle and end. The beginning called by modern critics the incentive movement must start the cost and effect chain but not be dependent on anything outside the compass of the play. Therefore, its costs are don't play, but its effects are stressed. The middle or complex must be caused by earlier incident and itself cause the incident that follow it. Therefore, it causes an effect are stressed. The end or resolution must be caused by the preceding event, but not lead to other incident. Outside the complex of the play. Therefore, it causes uh, our stress, but its effect don't play. The end should therefore solve or resolve the problem created during the incentive movement. Context: Aristotle calls the cost and effect chain leading from the incentive movement to the climax, the trying or in modern terminology, the complication he therefore terms the more rapid cost and effect chain from the climax to the resolution and unraveling loses in modern terminology the denouement context. For Aristotle, plot must be complete having unit of action by this Aristotle means that the plot must be structurally self-contained with the incident founded together by internal necessity its action leading inevitably to the next with no outside intervention no deus ex machina According to Aristotle, the worst kind of plot are episodic, in which the episode or act succeed that one another without probable or necessary sequence. The only thing that ties together the event in such a plot is the fact that they happen to the same person. Playwrights should exclude coincidence from their plots. If some coincidence is required, it should have an air of design, therefore seem to have a fit connection to the event of the play. Similarly, the poet should execute the irrational or least keep it outside the scope of tragedy. Therefore, report it rather than dramatize while the poet cannot change the myth that are the basic of his poet plots, he ought to show invention of his own and skillfully handle the traditional material to create unity of action in his plot. Our next subtopic is two kinds of myth, simple and complex. Aristotle classified a plot into different categories simple aplio and complex pipli gemenio simple plot have only a change of fortune catastrophe complex plot have both reversal of intention peripetia and recognition and a brorisis. Connected with the catastrophe, both peripetia and 
and a gorgeous turn upon surprises. Aristotle explained that a peripecia occur when a character produces an effect opposite to that which he intends to produce, while an anagoracis is a change from ignorance to knowledge, producing love or hate between the person designed for good or bad fortune. He argued that the best plot combined these two as part of their causes and effect chain. Therefore, the peripecia lead direct to the anagoracis. This in turn create the catastrophe leading to the final scene of suffering. Our next subtopic is Pathos or Suffering. Pathos describes the powerful emotion of pity and fear aroused in the audience of a tragedy. Aristotle named Pathos as one of the component of the tragic plot. Along with anagrosis and peripecia, poetic footing discusses good and bad combination of pathos with the knowledge or ignorance of the agent. Ranked from worst to best by Aristotle, these are the four logical possibilities of pathos. Pathos is about to occur with knowledge but does not occur. Pathos occur with knowledge. Pathos occur in ignorance. Pathos is about to occur in ignorance but does not occur. The emotional effect peculiar to the tragic action is therefore that of promoting the experience of feeling such as pity and terror which constitute the ultimate and at which the representation of the mythos m ethos or character one of the six components of tragedy or character referred to the human being represent in the drama as total stress that the central aim of Tragedy is not to depict human personalities, but rather to represent human action. A character can be considered as second in important to plot in Aristotle's hierarchical organization of this element. Representation of character should always enhance the plot. Augustine Tabor Mure examined the most importance and degree of interaction between plot and character. He does this by discussing Aristotle's statement about plot, a character in his poetic that plot can exist without character, but a character cannot exist without a plot, and so a character is secondary to the plot. Mure maintained that Aristotle did not mean that a complicated plot should hold the highest place in a tragedy play. This is because the plot was more often than not simple and therefore not a major point of tragic interest. Mure conjectures that people today do not accept Aristotle's statement about character and plot because to modern people, the most Memorable thing about tragedy plays are often the character Mure does, however, concede that Aristotle is correct in that there can be no portrayal of character without at least a skeleton outline of the plot. Our next subtopic is. Hamersia or the tragic falling. The Hamersia has a complex meaning which include sin, error, trespass, and missing the mark as in archery, missing the bulls. I. Hamersia is a literary term that refers to a tragic fall or error that lead to a character downfall in the novel Frankenstein. Victor Frankenstein 
agreed conviction that he can usurp the role of good god and nature in creating life directly led to renewed consciousness for himself making it an example of hamersia a scholar by the name of j m burmer traced the sima so logical history of the hamart group of the word from homer who also tried to determine the meaning behind the word and astral concluding that of the three possible meaning of hamersia missing error and offense the strategic right uses the second in our passage of poetic it is then a tragic error therefore a wrong action committed in ignorance of its nature effect etc which is the starting point of a casually connected train of event ending in disaster hemorrhagia a tragic falling even though the word is over 2000 years old the debate about the true meaning of hemorrhagia is alive and well the main disagreement between scholars today is over whether the term refer to a tragic fall or a tragic error point 1 a tragic fall connotes a quality that is inherent to the character personality such as pride of impulsiveness point 2 a tragic error on the other hand has nothing to do with a particular character personality whether it is a mistake that anyone could conceivably make such as missing the bus or mishearing something some scholar maintain that equating hamersia with tragic error is most faithful to aristotle's original definition and to the etymological root of the word which means missing the mark yet a total mention of priority support the opposing argument that hamersia refer to some in negative quality of the hero which leads to their demise this debate about the nature of hamersia is about as old as literature itself so there no easy answer to it All you need to know is that there are these several slight different definition of hamersia and some people adhere to one over the other hamersia is a tragic fall not just a fall hamersia is not just the major fall of protagonist rather the term can only be used in the context of tragedies or stories with tragic heroes in which the protagonist incites his or her own downfall some character may be deeply flawed but do not have hamersia if they fall don't ultimately lead to their downfall in bone film for intense secret agent james bond run around the world breaking rules destroying things killing people and objectified woman often times one of bones many falls get him into troubles but he always wins in the end so his falls are not example of hamersia hamersia example hamersia exists in all form of narrative from play to novel to film further it is found in story from the time of the ancient greek to the most modern narratives Hemorrhagia in literature. Hemorrhagia is used in tragic literature to propel the plot, deepen character, and make the provoking stories. So, friend, till here, your all six sub topic was completed, and your question number two is finished. Oh, uh, which was? Question number A answer, and now we
being with question number b which is poet as a man speaking to man and the answer for this question is the definition of poetry for all group poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful feeling and do this be true poems to which any value can be attracted were never produced or any variety of subject but by a man who being possessed of more than usual or organic sensibility had also thought long and deeply for our continued influence of feeling are modified and directed by our thoughts which are indeed the representative of all our past feeling and as by contemplating the relation of this general representative to each other we discover what is really important to man so by the repetition and continuance of this act our feeling will be connected with important subject till at length if we are originally possessed of such sensibility such habit of mind will be produced that by obeying blindly and mechanically the impulse of this habit we shall describe object and other sentiment of such a nature and in such connection with each other that the understanding of the reader must necessarily be in some degree enlightened and his affection strengthened and purified in this preface to his lyrical blared what's what make some general observation very much seemingly in a new classical vein about the subject of representation of poetry basically his view is that art holds a mirror up to nature he argue that poetry is the most philosophic of all writing because it's object is truth not individual and local but general and operative the poet singing a song in which all human join with him rejoins in the presence of truth as our visible friend and hourly companion in a manner that is very much in keeping with the emotion its synonyms with the edge of sensibility which occur in the second half of the 18th century he argued that this is carried alive into the heart by passion was what draw a contrast between poetry and other form of knowledge poetry offer the image of man and nature but is not impeded by the obstacle which stand in the way of the fidelity of the biographer and historian sounding a similar note to sydney was what argued that there is no object standing between the poet and the image of thing whereas a thousand obstacles stand between the things themselves and the biographer and historian by the same token with the man of science is concerned with the particular fact of nature which are the object of his studies the poet imitates whether in prose or verse the great and universal position of man the most general and interesting of their occupation and the entire world of nature in making the comment above was what sound like a very new classical note however the preface was also designed to serve as a defense of the radically different subject matter and style of the religious blood and function consequently as a poetic manifesto of sort he advanced what was for the time and place a revolutionary perceptive on poetry that has had a huge impact on subsequent poetry to the point where 
his assumption have largely become commonplace. He argued that his principal object of description or subject matter and by extension about which all poets should write was to represent incident and situation from common life. A philosophical goal inform what was intention in this regard. His purpose in depicting commonplace incident and situation is to trace the primarily law of our nature, in particular the manner in which we associate ideas in a state of excitement like Wollstonecraft, Wordsworth has in mind here the view of Loki on the nature of the mind as well as the so-called associationism of David Hartley whose view were inspired by Loki. Wordsworth in particularly interested in capturing how the human mind responds, though the sense when it existed or aroused by it encounter with the physical world and how the simple ideas which come to be formed thereby are later associated or combined with order to produce complex ideas. How is the depiction of humble flock conductive to ends? Wordsworth reveals that he chose to represent what he calls humble and rustic life in his poetry. Therefore, poor country flock, the disenfranchised and the downtrodden priestly because manner of ruler life germinate from those elementary feelings and from the necessary character of ruler occupation are more easily comprehended and are more durable and lastly because in the condition the passion of man are incorporated with the beauty and permanent form of nature so when our question number b answer was also finished and the video was become so long so we make question number c in next part so hope you all like our video and if you like please don't forget to share make comment and subscribe to our channel thank you